Hello, and welcome to the ASCO Journal of Oncology Practice podcast. This is Dr. Nate Pinnell, medical oncologist at the Cleveland Clinic and consultant editor for the journal. As a clinical investigator who interacts regularly with research nurses and research assistants, I'm often impressed by the heavy workload that running clinical trials puts on our research staff. The question often comes up, where's the best place to put our resources? Where should we be hiring and staffing? Wouldn't it be nice to have a validated tool that we can use to estimate this complexity and help guide us? So to talk about this exact issue today, we have Marge Good, who is a nurse consultant in the Community Oncology Prevention Trials Research Group at the National Cancer Institute's Division of Cancer Prevention, to talk with me about her paper, Assessing Clinical Trial-Associated Workload in Community-Based Research Programs Using the ASCO Clinical Trial Workload Assessment Tool, published ahead of print in the JOP last month. Marge, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, you're most welcome. Thank you for inviting me. So why do we need instruments such as the ASCO Clinical Trials Workload Tool? I think for very much the reasons you alluded to in your opening comment, having been a manager of a research program for 20-some years prior to coming to my current role at the NCI, I dealt with that on a day-to-day basis and trying to understand and figure out my staff who many would come to me overwhelmed, felt they were overwhelmed, but it was difficult to know were they really overwhelmed compared to their other colleagues And how did our program then compare to even others that were similar to us across the country? There were no answers to that at the time. So for 10 years in Wichita, when I was at the CCOP or Committee Oncology Program there, we assessed workload. For a while, we assessed just counting patients. And then we realized nurses and staff who were taking care of, for example, an adjuvant breast cancer versus staff that were regularly assigned to take care of an acute leukemia patient on a trial there was a significant difference between how busy they were. There was not as much work associated with caring for the adjuvant breast cancer patient and those trials in relation to the data that was collected as well as just the complexity of their care compared to a patient who was on an acute leukemia trial that required flow sheets and data submitted on a weekly basis, data collected on a daily basis, submitted, and those patients were much more acutely ill, resulting in more adverse events, and therefore more data collected. There was a significant difference between the workload. So we began then assessing protocols on an individual basis, looking at the complexity, and assigned a score, basically, one being a simple trial that didn't require a lot of work, and usually those were like follow-up patients who went off treatment and they were now in follow-up, would we give them assigned a score of one, whereas a four was those very complex studies, the acute leukemia, the bone marrow transplant, high-intensity lymphoma trials. So we collected that data for over 10 years and really helped that data collecting it, helped me as a manager to understand the workload between my staff. It helped me to balance staff. We did it on a monthly basis, and I could see over time trends of one person maybe being busier than another, and I could say, you don't need to take new patients for this month. Let's get this person a chance to get caught back up. And so it helped us to balance the workload, helped me then to justify over time the rationales for needing more staff if the burden became so high that my staff was complaining to me about being burdened and overworked. I actually had metrics then I could go to my administration and say, look at the change over time. This is where we were a year ago. This is where we are now, and we're staying busy. It's not going away. I need to bring on more staff. And so it gave me justification to do that. That sounds like an incredibly useful thing. In my own experience, I think we desperately need something like this ourselves. So tell me a little bit about the particular project that you describe in the paper here, the ASCO Clinical Trial Workload Assessment Tool Project. Sure. This is a project that came out of the community research forum that ASCO has been doing on an annual basis. I hesitate to count the number of years. I think it's four or five. And ASCO did an assessment of their community-based practice sites and asked them what were their burdens and what were their issues associated with clinical trial accrual. And numerous topics came out, one of them being workload assessment, and it actually was like the fourth highest ranked need to have something to help them with out of like 12 items that were addressed. And so ASCO then started the initiation of a working group, which I was privileged to lead and work with several other physicians as well as research nurses to come up with a tool that ASCO could use to build and have the sites use. 
And so we assessed the workload across the different literature information that was out there, but we ended up landing on what we had done in Wichita because it was a fairly simple tool, didn't have a lot of complexity to the tool itself, and we felt would be more adaptable in the general day-to-day activities of community-based sites. So ASCO kindly then converted the Wichita tool into a web-based tool. And we then use that tool to test across community-based programs. And we stayed with community because it was out of the community research forum. We wanted to keep it at community-based, but it also allowed it to be more of an applicable information we felt afterwards that it, this was what took place in communities and academics and larger centers could apply this information we felt later, but to keep the project simple and to not be comparing apples and oranges, we felt we wanted to keep it to community-based sites. So that's how it began. ASCO built the tool. We invited community sites to participate. We were hoping we'd get 30 sites. We got 100 sites asking to participate. We had 50 uh, complete the project, 51 actually. What did the sites have to do? They basically had to, the upfront work was a bit of work. They had to enter into the tool all of their active trials that they had active at the time. And that included studies that had patients receiving therapy, but also trials that they were still conducting follow-up on. Those trials had to all be entered into the system. And then they had to assign a score, a workload score, an acuity score to each of those trials using a worksheet and tool within the tool that allowed them. Basically, we gave them criteria to follow. One was basically follow-up. Two was a study somewhat more difficult. Three was probably most phase three trials. And the four, again, was the very complex, high-complex studies. And so they used this criteria to assign scores to their trials based on how complex that trial was for them in their community setting. We had considered centrally assigning scores, but we felt we needed to allow the community site because what might be easy for one community site may not be as easy for another. So we wanted them to assign their own scores for the trials. So they had to do that up front. That part was probably the most labor-intense portion of it. And then once a month, they went in to enter data, meaning they entered in how many visits that they had that month on per trial per staff person, and that's what generated results then. You know, that makes perfect sense. Although, since we were talking about a workload assessment tool, my first impression when reading this is it sounds like quite a lot of work. And it sounds like even many of the original applicants pulled out because they were concerned about how much effort was going to go into this. So from a practical standpoint, having actually used this tool in your own facility, do you think this is something that is practical on a large scale? I really do. And it was interesting to see that information. And it was telling in a way that sites were too busy to use the tool. They didn't have enough time to use the tool. And I felt badly for them in a way, but it is a reflection of what's going on. But I think it's important that they do assess workload because that information then can be the metrics that they need to go to their administration, to go somewhere to hopefully get more staff to support them so they're not so overwhelmed. It sounds like it would be perhaps a fairly significant upfront investment in time, but then probably much easier to maintain once it's already up and running. Right. And that's the feedback we received from the sites that participated in the project. It was work up front, but they felt once it was done, the monthly process of adding the data was just updating. What were the major findings of the project? Well, we found out that, not necessarily surprised, that treatment trials were a little more complex and had more work associated with them than a cancer control or symptom management trial. Industry trials were much more difficult and busy, heavier level of work than NCI cooperative group funded trials. We kind of knew that. I think that wasn't in necessarily new information, but it was confirming. But we also were able to produce evidence that some trials are more complex and just counting patients per staff person is not necessarily a good metric to use. We divided our set of community sites into groups based on their size, meaning the size of the number of staff they had. We thought originally we could just look at it as an aggregate, a large group. Each of them is so individually different, we decided we needed to break them into groups. And so we divided the 51 programs into five different groups, and we compared them then between to see what differences there were. We compared two different groups, for example, like group one and group four. Group one had 11 patients per month, and for a patient on study, and group four had 15 However, group one, when you looked at the acuity score, the level of work, their 
acuity was half that of group four. Group four was twice as much. And when you looked at the types of trials, then group four had 60% of their trials were industry versus a much smaller percent for group one. They only had 9% that were industry. So if those two only looked at the number of the patients, they looked very similar. But if you looked at the actual workload associated, group four was much busier than group one when you looked at just the patients that were on study on treatment. And we also saw that somewhat if in another group that they had, it was a group five, you had higher acuity scores, and we wondered why, and they had a higher percentage of industry than they did NCINIH. So it was confirming to us and strong evidence that you really need to look at the protocol themselves as far as work and not just count patients. Yeah, I think that in order for this to be useful, you have to demonstrate that this is something beyond what you can get just from sort of looking at your trial portfolio and estimating that. And I think by splitting it up into the different groups, that was, in my mind, the most powerful illustration of how useful this instrument can be. So this is something that was designed to be used. So where can people find this if they want to try it out in their own centers? Well, it's now available on the ASCO website at http colon forward slash forward slash workload dot asco dot org. There is a initial agreement that the institution would agree to, but it's very simple. Other than that, it's free of charge and open and accessible to anyone. Don't even have to be an ASCO member to participate or to utilize the tool. So thank you so much, Marge, for joining me today to talk about your paper. I think this is going to be widely read and hopefully widely adopted. I certainly hope so. We want to get the word out there so people are aware, because as I've said, a question that's very frequently asked. And I also want to thank our listeners who joined us for this podcast. The full text of the paper is available now at jop.ascopubs.org under Early Release Articles and scroll down to the March 22, 2016 date. Don't forget you can also read the JOP and access these podcasts on your smartphone or tablet with the ASCO Journal's mobile app available on the iTunes Store and Google Play. This is Dr. Nate Pinnell for the Journal of Oncology Practice signing off. Thank you for listening.